Hi, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country or what you think morning looks like for you. It still feels like morning for me. So welcome to our webinar. I'm so excited today to have um, secured signing back with us, Bill Gimbel and Roger Castile. 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 I, knew gonna, I knew I was going to do that. We just talked about it. Roger Castile. I'm so sorry. Um, I see obviously morning. So for me, I need more coffee. We ran a webinar with these guys uh, when we first uh, started doing runs in New York State, and they've had some significant upgrades and some stuff that they want to share with you. So they asked if they could do this again. And of course, we love to have people come back and talk about what's going on. So um, I know there are not everyone on this um, webinar is from New York. We opened up to everybody. So it is not New York State specific, although we'll talk about New York State stuff, I guess, if we get there. Um, secured signing isn't. How many states are you guys in? 40, 40, 40 states. So if you're from one of those 40 states, welcome. Uh, I know that California seems to be on the verge, right, of signing, it looks like. So um, we'll be closer to that. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Bill and Roger. If you have any questions, I ask that you drop it in the Q&A so that we can make sure we get those answered for you. You, of course, as always, are welcome to chat amongst yourselves. But we will send it over. And thank you guys again for coming morning. Our pleasure. Okay, Marcy, can we share my screen? You should be able to share. Let me know if you can't. Okay, do I let me go to uh, we gave the ability at the bottom. Vanessa, you might have to do that since uh, I got it here. Okay, see oh, it. Good, perfect. Okay, if you could let me know that you can both uh, see my screen as well as hear me. Yes, perfect. As long as everyone perfect. in the audience can. If you can't, just drop a little note in the chat, but it looks like you're good. Okay, again, uh, thank you so much for joining today. We have some uh, some significant uh, features that we've added to the website. And today's webinar, we've all been involved in RON. Actually, I did my first RON in July of twenty. 13, oh, more than 10 years ago. So I've seen it evolve, you know, across markets and across industries, seen the challenges with both ex execution as well as adoption. And, and now that uh, 42 or so states have now adopted it, California looks like next year, it, uh, it has really now begun to take off. And I'm assuming most of you are familiar with the basic operation of remote online notarization. So today we're going to focus on more unique features, what separates secured signings, and really, more seriously, how that benefits you. You know, we're not going to beat on our chest, but having been a notary for 20 plus years, a signing agent for the same amount of time, conducted over 2,300 closings myself, and managed over 5 million. So I know what where the rubber meets the road. And this is what we're going to try to focus on today how to execute in unusual situations, how to build, grow, and protect your business. So that's the essence of what we'll be going over today. Uh, Roger, do you want to uh, say a few, uh, add a few elements to uh, the introduction as well, please? Sure. Thanks, everyone. So Roger Castile, been with Secured Signing a little over about two and a half years now. So I um, did not do my first run as early as Bill did uh, just a couple years ago when I started with this company. Um, probably do demonstrations about, you know, 10 a week and then just personally doing RON transactions alone between five and 10 a month, um, but, but utilizing this platform. So certainly I've learned the ins and the outs and certainly the upgrades with the platform itself, I think you're going to find uh, quite pleasing today. And just so you all know, we continue to add upgrades as we go. We have a couple in the works right now that we hope to roll out before the end of the year. And certainly we'll let Marcy know about those upgrades uh, when time is right. Uh, but there's some really super exciting things to really control and manage your business uh, utilizing this platform. But thanks, Bill. All right, guys. Today, again, our demonstration, will we're going to go through e-signatures, we're going to go through IPAN, and we're going to go through RON. And again, focusing on the unique features that benefit you. Um, again, about us, we've been around for 13 13, 14 years, I think now, Roger. That's correct. Uh, we're rated in the top three e-signature platforms worldwide with clients 
in over 45 countries in server farms on four different continents, uh, servicing some of the most secure environments in the uh, actually globally. So the takeaway is we're quite quite uh, quite secure. Uh, we do have community advertising and brochures that you guys can private label. We'll show you that. We're going to go over how to manage, build, and protect your business. On to demonstrations, on to Q and A, as well as how to open an account. So that's that's the format today, and we're going to move briskly because we've got a lot to cover. Again, a secured signings when any document is signed, be it e signed or RON or IPIN or REN, it's signed with a PKI digital signature certificate that tamper seals the document. It's not just a cosmetic application of a signature like a DocuSign. It's actually a PKI signature. And this provides you an enhanced level of security as well as validation. Again, secured signing has been rated as the top three digital signing platforms worldwide every year since 2017. And Google now ranks us in the top three. Ron platforms worldwide. We, of course, are ISO, HIPAA, FDA, MISMO, approved and certified. We are CCPA, GDPR, and comply to every single RON state statute. Again, we are a global company founded in 2010 with offices in New Zealand, Australia, Great Britain, and of course here in the U.S. and Arizona, California, Florida, and New Jersey, serving 45 countries. <clears throat> A couple of the uh, the features that were at, requested over and over by our notaries was, can you convert all your commands on your website into Spanish, which we have done. So our default invitations, all commands, all execution directions are now available to you in Spanish. And you can make this selection on the fly. You can have signer one in Spanish, signer two in English, signer three in Spanish, uh, and the notary in English. So we'll show you this in the demonstration, how that's architected. But that's a great feature. We have, a, as you can imagine, we have a huge Spanish population in Puerto Rican and New York. Uh, so this feature is really kind of a long time in coming in. I, in my opinion, a little late to the party, but at least we're there. So this is a feature that I think a lot of you can use and embrace to increase your business and increase the effectiveness of your presentations to your marketplace. Again, briefly going over our feature-rich environment is a subscription to the secured signing platform. Again, there's no upfront fees. It's month to month. It's only $9.95, $9.95. And that includes your ability to upload an unlimited number of pages per document, meaning you are allowed 10 document uploads per month with no charge that's included in your subscription. And again, those documents can be 150 pages or one page. Yeah, we have, of course, the electronic journal that's auto-populated, it's included. We have a notary community web landing page that is included with your monthly subscription. So if you don't have a website, we provide you a website, excuse me, a web page that you can use to advertise, promote, and communicate with your client and prospects. We provide you the my mouse is a little touchy this morning. Uh, provide you your own digital stamp if you don't have it. We provide a notary queue, meaning if you're working with two or three or four notaries or you have a signing service, you can enter all your members into your team's account. And then you can either select from a particular notary in your group or you can send a broadcast out to all your members and ask who's going to pick this signing up. You can do sub menu sub cues meaning you could send this broadcast out to only notaries that speak spanish you could create another queue of notaries that work weekends or late evenings you could create another queue uh, for notaries that are experts in various areas so you can create as many cues as you need to effectively control manage and grow your business for identity purposes uh, we do a lot of foreign nationals, a lot of people that do not have a U.S. social security number. And one of the reasons we can do that is the ability we have to do not only an ID validation of over 5,000 various different IDs from over 200 countries, but we also do a biometric match and we comply with the NIST standard that is a requirement for the state of New York. Actually, we were the first signing Ron platform that complied with those enhanced provisions. 
because honestly, we have been doing that all along. So we validate the ID, we do a biometric face match, and of course, we have the KBA Knowledge Base Authentication Series. Uh, again, we sign all the documents with digital signatures, be that an e-signature or a re remote online notary signature, an in-person electronic notarization, or a remote ink notarization. So anytime we apply an electronic signature, it's a digital signature, not just electronic. And of course, we record the recording of the event based on your statutory requirement, and we retain that recording for five, seven, or 10 years, regardless of your subscription status. Meaning if you retired from being a notary in two years, we're still gonna hold that recording and give you access, even though you no longer pay a month to month subscription for 10 years after the last execution or whatever the statutory retention period is in your jurisdiction. Uh, our documents can be up to 50 megabytes per upload, meaning you can upload actually a num an unlimited number of documents but no single individual upload can be greater than 50 megabytes, which they just, as a routine, are not. So we have you covered in that regard. Bill, can I ask a quick question before yes. you move on, if you wouldn't mind? Of course. So in terms of a foreign national who, where you can verify their ID, how does the KBA portion work? I assume that they don't have a U.S. credit history. So where would that information get pulled from? It wouldn't. Okay. They're very, they're very candid. A KBA, as you know, the knowledge based authentication, is, are five questions, six answers, two minutes. Follow the federal follows the Federal Bridge Act, and a user must have a U.S. resident profile, not necessarily a social, but they must have information in credit repositories enough to configure those questions. Gotcha. Is that a, does that Marcy? Does that you think that's sufficient? It does. So in states that require a KBA, right, let's say for New York, we wouldn't really know. We'd have to determine that before the ID yes. portion is covered, but we need Absolutely. to make sure they have some sort of credit history, which is right. possible if they've purchased, right, lots of foreign nationals purchase properties in New York. It's possible that that might uh, be of assistance here. But okay, that's what I yeah. wanted to make sure for anybody who was on, who was aware of that. You can't use biometrics by itself in the state of New York. It certainly is a good addition to um, this, but you'd still need the KBA portion if you weren't using witnesses or whatever that might be. Absolutely. And, and, a, and an add-on point to that, Marcy, is that if you have a client that is a foreign national that you do or do not know whether or not they have sufficient credit history, run a KBA first thing when they uh, when you set up the appointment. Say, Mr. Smith, uh, I want you to, I'm not sure whether or not you will pass a KBA uh, can you, as soon as you get the appointment, can you click on this and run through your uh, KBA challenge? And if you get a pop-up that says insufficient information to create the questions, please let us know immediately. That way we can set up alternate provisions to verify your identity. So that's so, excellent information. So they can actually, when we set the appointment, the signer can go through the identification process prior to us meeting with them to make sure that they pass. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. Thank you Correct. so much. Because you do not want to be able to scramble to find credible witnesses, you know, four minutes after the appointment's supposed to start. So I heartily encourage, even if you have to do it twice as a screen, but certainly at least once in those environments where you believe the uh, the client may be uh, credit data short or could not have sufficient information in which to present a KBA. That gives you time to, to associate or gather credible witnesses based on your state statutes. Great. I have a lot of um, pricing questions. I'm assuming that you will get yes. to that yet yeah, later. Absolutely. So I'm going to let everyone know Bill's going to go through that entire structure. So hang tight. All right, Bill, thank you so much. I will let you get back to it. Okay. In your monthly subscription, here's this handsome young man, Roger, uh, that happens to be with us today. Part of your monthly subscription includes a landing page for you to promote in your emails and or post to your website. This allows your clients to read about you. You can create your, your Vita a resume, your experience, enter all the information you see here. It also allows your clients to request a quote. And more importantly, and most importantly, I believe, is the ability for them to send your documents to be executed in an encrypted format in transit. That's going to be critical in HIPAA and medical environments. It's a requirement. 
In mortgage, it's a best practice. In legal, in some arenas, it's requirement. It's always a best practice. So this is included with your monthly subscription, the ability to create your own image here. And what you will do is you will have a link that you will create that represents your company name by using a software called Bitly, B-I-T-L-Y, www.bitly.com, allows you to reconfigure the URL to represent your company name. So that's included with your monthly subscription. The other thing that's included with a paid account is we have created for you a brochure that goes over digital signatures, goes over RON, goes over IPEN, and you can brand this with your company name, your logo, your look, your feel with regards to your information, your phone, and whatever disclaimer or additional message you want to add at the bottom. So that has been asked for for quite a while, and we're happy to now to provide this to you so that you can create your own brochure to email as a leave behind that has your name on it. The only reference to secured signing is going to be at the very bottom where it will say powered by secured signing Inc. So this is for you to promote your services to your markets. Um, also, another feature that's really important and underutilized is domain authentication. If you have your own domain, such as at ABC Mobile Notary, as opposed to Gmail or Comcast or .live.com, if you own your own domain, which only costs between $10 and $25 per year, all the information that is sent out, the invitations from our email server will come out under your email domain. That's important. You don't want clients getting an email with private information in the documents coming from at securedsigning.com or at some other ronplatform.com. That's confusing. But you have the ability, if you own your own domain, again, such as at mobilenotary.com, all emails sent from our platform, which would be the invitation, the reminder, and the thank you, will come out from your email domain. And I've got a, a kind of a trick question in the next one. What is 1.37% in 2021? What that is, is the percentage of notorial events during 2021 that occurred as a percentage of the total 1 billion in the mortgage market. So the mortgage market represents less than 2% of all notorial transactions conducted in 2021. And that's right from the Mortgage Bankers Association. So that begs the question, well, where the heck are the rest of them occurring? That is covered in our Learn to Earn webinar. We go over four distinct markets that are much larger individually than the mortgage market, much less cyclical. And we provide you the types of documents, the, the pain points of these markets, how to introduce yourself to the market. So that's included with a paid subscription of our weekly uh, webinars that we hold both Thursday and Wednesday. And more on that in a moment. Okay, pricing. Okay, here we go. We are very transparent. I want to make it very, very, did I say very? Yeah, very clear. Your basic subscription, which gives you everything I just showed you, is $9.95 per month, billed at the end of the month. If you want us to store your recordings for the statutory period, it's an additional $5 per month or $14.95 a month or $60 a year as an insurance policy. If you only subscribe at $9.95, we will send you your recording. We'll still hold your journal for the statutory period, but we will send you your recording at the end of seven days, and which time you would need to download it and save it and also make a backup copy. Now, with regards to transaction costs, you only pay for what you need when you need it. And I'll show you how that lays out in a moment. If you have a transaction where you have uploaded a document and it's one of your first gen, so there's no charge for that, and you've got a KBA that you must run on your client, which is a dollar, and I'll go over these line item prices in a moment, and you run a ID plus biometric, that's $3, that's $4, and you're going to record it, so that's a $5 for the doing the actual recording. In distinction from storage, it's $5 to actually create the recording because we create an original and a backup at AWS Amazon Web Services. If that signing cancels, you go in, delete it, 
and all the credits that are associated with that future event are returned to your account. So you should always have sufficient credits in your account to conduct the next signing. If you don't, when you log in, you can order them right on the fly then. So that goes to pay for only what you need when you need it. Again, the monthly subscription includes your journal, branding. Again, you can label our website with your look, your feel, your logo, your scripting. It includes the brochures. It includes training classes, which we hold every Thursday at 3 o'clock East Coast time, where only users of the platform can attend. And they ask questions about how do I do this or how do I do that? So if you register for the Thursday class, you have like five checkboxes that you could check about what you want to see reviewed, plus another where you can enter your unique request. I've got a signing coming up and uh, uh, Jane is signing for her husband as POA. So she's going to sign Jane Signer. Then she's got to sign uh, Joe Signer, Jane Signer for Jane, Joe Signer as his attorney, in fact. How do you do that? How do you create dual signatures? So it's things like that, the unusual situations that occur out there. And the fortunate slash unfortunate thing about notorial arts is the learning curve is exponent is, is experiential, meaning you don't know what you don't know until you experience it, and you don't want to experience it live during a session. So by joining those classes, you get to take the benefit of the other notaries' experiences or challenges. So you may learn three or four new unique solutions to unusual problems that you did not even know existed. So it's very well attended. It's it's robust. We stay online till every single question is answered. So that's become a very successful part of our presentation. Uh, in addition to the nine, in with the subscription, uh, again you have the secure upload software platform. That's part of that web page we showed you. A listing in the in the notary community listings page that you can use to advertise. Unlimited templates. You know, a template is a document that you use over and over and over and over again. Well, you can pre-prepare it for signatures, initials, dates, text boxes. And all you do when you go to prepare that actual document is enter the signer's name and it auto-populates everywhere. It's a great time saver and a great way to create a copy package. Uh, and again, the subscription includes 10 document uploads a month. And again, a document could be one page. It can be 150 pages. The 11th document costs you $1.50. And this is where we're going to go over the line item pricing. So again, be very, very clear. The first 10 document uploads during your calendar, or your, yes, your subscription month, is included with your $9.95. The 11th is $1.50. Every time you apply the stamp, which we can create for you at no cost, that's a dollar per stamp. To record the video meeting and make a backup, it's $5. Now, we do store that if you've elected for the $14.95 subscription level, five, seven, or 10 years. We also charge, of course, for the validation of an ID with biometric face mask is $3, and a KBA is only a dollar. So that's the line item pricing, and this is all on our brand new website. We just redid our website about a month ago, and I encourage you all to visit and kind of poke around. <clears throat> okay. We have a couple of quick questions. Yes, absolutely. That would be okay. Um, so in order for the notary, if they if you store their recording, do they have the ability to access it on their own or would they need yes. to go through you to get it? Okay, they do have the ability to do that. And are they, no, they stored? Just, just... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, they just log in. Now again, remember, if we've stored their recordings and they stop paying their monthly subscription, they still have access to that recording and can log in to their journal and their recordings for 10 years. They can also download their own recording, even though we're also storing it, or they can elect, no, we don't want you to store that. We don't want to pay the $60 a year as an insurance policy. We're going to archive our own recordings. They pay $9.95, and then they can download that recording. Typically, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to compress uh, after the signing and um, or and we also of course send them that recording link that they can download at the end of seven days does that answer the questions they had marcy it does yep so, so seven day at the end of seven days if they choose not to utilize your service correct to store those videos 
Or right. Either or, I suppose, what I probably should say here. End of seven days, regardless, to get that link for the recording. Right. If they subscribe at the 995 level, we will send them their recording at the end of the seven days, whether or not they have downloaded it intermittently or not. We just want to be sure. Perfect. And are the recordings uh, kept offline or are they accessible via the internet? They're accessible via the internet by logging into the platform. And the last question is regarding training. Um, someone wants to know if there is the ability to do mock trainings or practice with others on secured signing. Uh, yes, we do. We have an, that's a very, very popular request. And actually every Thursday we go over that, how to, how to practice, how to create mock signings, you know, with yourself, with, with your friends and associates. Yeah. That's a very popular request. And we go over that every Thursday in the training class. And if you're not a subscriber, Roger goes over that every Wednesday at 3 p.m. East Coast time in our live demonstration of the platform. Perfect. And that's all the questions we have for now. Thank you. Okay. Let's let's move on. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you a few. Yep. Let's let's go back here. Let's get on to the demonstration. First thing I'm going to show you is do not forget that particularly those people in the mortgage market that our platform supports e-signatures for disclosures for trailing documents you can provide e-signature services to your clients and if it's just e-signature and if it's just within the first 10 uploads in your calendar month that's there's no charge for that that's included in your monthly subscription but I want to show you another feature. I, we were, Roger and I were at the American Bar Association Technology Conference in Chicago, and they went crazy over this feature. It's the ability, and this, again, at no additional charge, to get a video confirmation of who signed that document in an e-signed environment. So it's kind of a between a, like a DocuSign execution and a notarial event. And let me show you how that works, because it's really a cool feature, and it's going to set you apart from the competition. So let me go to my invitation here. Okay. Bill, you just need to switch your screen there. We're still seeing yeah. the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, let me bring that, stage that first. Okay. So, Marcy, do I need to stop and then reshare? Um. Yeah. Let I, me let me click. I new think share. so. Yeah. Yeah. Let me mm -hmm. click new share. Okay. There we go. Now, do you see my uh, email? Yes. Okay, so this is an email that has been sent to one of your clients that are required to sign a document. So all they do is they click on, click to view and sign and enter this unique passcode. Click continue. Okay, and this pop-up will indicate your company's name. It's part of the branding package. Okay, now your client, as all clients do, they're going to click to sign this document. And they get a pop-up. It confirms that they indeed want to sign up. Then another pop-up. that The first pop-up is part of the UE to e-sign requirement, granting or acknowledging permission to execute documents electronically. In your script, it says you have been required to take a video of you actually signing this document. So you click on video. And this is actually a camera on the side of my desk. It is live. That's where the signer would appear, and the client signer clicks start recording. And they're going to be given a liveness test called turn head to the left. So it proves that this was taken in a live environment. And there's various tests, you know, bring your chin to your chest. Stop recording, click submit. And now you'll notice that the signature of the signer will actually appear. That's a very, very cool feature. And those high value documents or in those environments where you want to separate your offering from all the other e-signature platforms out there is a great way to, uh, to again, separate your service as being excellent, as being state-of-the-art. So it's really a cool feature, and that's included with your monthly subscription. Do we have any questions, Marcy, on that? No, we don't. But they do have a question regarding, so for New York State, 
were required to submit that exemplar. Um, do you have a process for them to create yes. it? Do they send you the information and you create it? I assume that you're going to help them do that so they can submit to the secretary. Yes, we actually have a boilerplate form that we will send you. It's in Word. And you enter your notary name, you upload it to the platform, you apply your stamp, your signature, that you download that document and submit it to the New York State Licensing Bureau. So, yeah, we'll walk you through that. Great. Thank you. Can you, before we, we move on, talk a little bit about your support? How does support work if we're in a session? Can we reach someone? Is it by chat or email, call? All of the above. Uh, we have a help desk, help desk at secured signing, and that we also have a direct dial number. Now, I want to be very honest with you. If you're in the middle of a signing, I can't guarantee someone will pick up the phone. We could be on the phone with somebody else. Uh, you know, I helped last night, helped, actually helped a New York notary through a signing where she had forgotten how to share her screen. And that really goes to the tremendous emphasis we put on training and testing. You really have to know this platform or any platform prior to marketing yourself as being the expert of this platform. I mean, Ron is to notaries what Excel was to accountants in 1987. In 1987, Microsoft introduced Excel to the accounting world, turned it on its ear. It took about five to seven years for it to become ubiquitous. But at the end of that period, if you weren't, weren't, weren't properly educated in Excel, you were no longer an accountant. Ron is kind of the same way. It takes some practice. It doesn't fall easily to your hand, and you don't know what you don't know. So that's why I suggest you practice and attend our Thursday classes. So it's an evolutionary process. But we do have chat support. Excuse me, not chat support. Well, we do through our help desk at securedsigning.com. We also have our direct dial phone numbers where you can reach us. But again, I don't want to mislead anybody that if we're you're in the middle of a signing and you forgot how to share your screen, we will get back to you as soon as possible and maybe answer the phone, but I don't want to mislead anybody. I appreciate that. I think that's it for questions. So I'll turn it back over. Thank you. Okay. Now we had talked about IPIN, in-person electronic notarization. Uh, that's been around since 2003, 04, 05. Uh, we did a bunch of them with Flagstar, which is New York City Bank now, and with... Uh, Amtrust, which actually is New York City Bank now, and the Flagstar is a separate bank that we did those for. So IPIN is a derivative of RON on the platform that allows you to present with your laptop an execution of a document directly to the signer when they're with you. Essentially, you're just replacing your laptop or, or iPad from paper. So you're not schlepping in 300 pages of paper. You're just bringing your laptop. And I'm going to show you how that works. Okay. I just want to confirm everybody can see the screen and they see our main web page. Yes. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to log in <clears throat> to my account as a, as a notary. And I am going to select we sign again, Ron is for remote. We sign is for in person or when you want to send documents out to be signed but not notarized. And I sign is for when people send you documents that you want to sign and encrypt. So to do an IPIN, we're going to click on We Sign. We're going to upload a document just like we would for a Ron. We're going to add the document to the platform just like we would do with Ron. Let me get that. Uh, Okay, let me do it this way. Okay, I'm going to upload this document. I'm going to prep it just like I would for a RON transaction. Again, a very similar workflow. I'm going to add the, the signature of a signer. Enter their email address. And this is going to be a face-to-face -face signing. That's where it changes. And I'm going to add Jane's signature here. I'm going to add the notary signature and stamp down here. And I'm going to say, well, you know what? I want uh, I want the the name printed under the signature. I, 
I want the date and time printed under that as well. And I'm going to click on Next. Okay, now here also, both in IPEN as well as RON, is where you could select the language that you want the invitation and the commands to be represented. Do you want Spanish or do you want English? And again, you can choose that for any signer, all signers, some, as well as the notary. It's as simple as that. Okay, this is going to be a face-to-face, -face, and you see where it says share with? If you had multiple notaries in your network, you can share that or give that or assign that to that specific notary. Or And uh, let me show you here. Again, the notary is face-to-face, -face, and it's important that they enter their cell phone number because they're going to get a security code to allow them access to, uh, to the session when the notary is there with the signer. Okay, so we've set this up. It's face-to-face, -face, and we're going to send this out. Okay, the platform said, hey, you didn't complete your journal. So you would complete your journal for the demonstration and for time. I'm going to disable that feature, which when you practice, you can do rather than load your journal up with a must, a bunch of test uh, uh, transactions. So you can elect to delete that for testing purposes. And I'm going to send this out. Okay, now the, the assumption is now that I'm the notary, the signer's come to me or I've gone to the signer, and uh, I'm opening up my laptop just like you would pull from your briefcase or your satchel a, a stack of 300 pages of documents, and I'm going to, let me, I need to close this, but my toolbar is, okay. Okay, I'm going to need to reshare my screen. Uh, can I, does everybody see my screen with the website? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So now the assumption is I'm with the signer. So I am going to log into the site and I am going to log into the face to face portal down here. Log in just with my normal secured signing email address and secure password. Okay, and again, now I'm in front of the signer. Now it's loading the document in preparation for execution. So at this point, you know, I would have did, would have examined the ID of the signer, entered that in my paper-based journal. I would have determined willingness, intent, and uh, uh, understanding of the documents. Uh, these are the normal stuff that you do on the day-to-day -day basis for a, your standard paper-based signing. Only in this case, we're going to conduct it on our laptop. So we're uploading and configuring the document. You see, this is where the spinning tool you see right here. And we do get a little bit of latency because we're going through a uh, go to meeting sort of environment so that it, it's a little bit slower than it normally is. So if you bear with me, uh, any questions up to this point? Well, so Bill, this is Roger. I just want to add to the reason why you're logging into that face to face portal there. It's still the same username and password, but what it does is it keeps your client from seeing anything else that you might be working on. So this is part of the secured signing platform, but it's taking them directly just to their signing. So as you're handing the device over to them to sign, they're not seeing everything else that you've got going on, right? For, for compliance reasons, it might be, or just, you know, privacy reasons. Yeah. Great point, Roger. Uh, okay, so now you're going to you're sliding the computer over to the signer and say, okay, Jan, I want you to click on the on the sign button there. So they click on sign, and they're going to receive a passcode to their their cell phone. And if they've entered the wrong cell phone, you can also, of course, re-enter uh, uh, the correct one. And let me open up my cell phone here and go to my my text message and enter my code. And continue. So again, the, this is the signer. The signer is at the computer. They've entered their security code. They've opted in to sign the document electronically and they click on sign and their signature is applied. <clears throat> at this point, then the notary clicks on the document management pad and they refresh the screen to go to their side. And again, when they sign the document, if there were multiple pages, multiple documents, a platform automatically goes to the next document and the next and next and next and next. Be that action step, a signature, 
an initial or a data entry point. So now I'm the notary, and now I'm, as the notary, going to click sign. And I'm also going to get a uh, security code. Two, four. Okay, all signatures are valid. And the importance of this is, this lets you know that nothing has changed since Jane signed that document. The document has not been tampered with. So if you had Jane sign, and then John came in later and signed in, it validates that nothing has changed when John goes to sign. So the notary is now going to sign the document. And again, if there were multiple documents, it would just go to the next one and the next one and the next one. And it is as simple as that. And of course, so, you can use an iPad or an ePad too for the signings, right? So it's not just somebody's desktop or laptop. You can be with an iPad or with Wi-Fi or some sort of signal to to sign these documents. Just as a reminder. So okay. can I jump off of that real quick? So I know that back in the day of, of Blackstar and Amtrust, part of the problem was that we had to be online or we had to be near internet or to do this. Can, is there a way... Is it required here or can they sign the documents where there is no service and then they get uploaded or sent off to whoever they have to be when we're back no. in a service area? No, no. And let me explain the reason for that. Uh, we have to authenticate to the server for security reasons. Uh, if it was offline, there's no way of us creating a contiguous uninterrupted audit trail. So you have to have Wi-Fi service. Okay, important thing to note for everyone out there because it, there's some very rural areas where there isn't great Wi-Fi service, so just keep that in mind. Absolutely. If you recall, Marcia, when we did the Amtra signings, it was common for us to call the signer and ask the signer, how's your cell reception at the house there? Always, we, every single time. Yes, every <laughs> single time. We had the wireless card you plugged into the side of your computer with an antenna, and the, the signer said, well, no, uh, it's spotty. Well, can we meet downtown in the library? You know, so a similar scenario, although it's a huge, it's, it's been 15, 18 years ago. So there's been a huge uptick in internet capability in broadband across the United States. So you don't run into that as much anymore. Uh, um, so and this, someone wants to know, is this only on the web? There's, It's not an app, correct? This on app that I can use? Correct. It's internet. a browser-based platform. You don't need to download an application. Perfect. And is this part, uh, is this part of the 995 yes. subscription? So important for everyone to know it's all under the umbrella of that 995 per month or 1495 with correct you can do e-signature transactions you can do e-signature with video confirmation as you saw you can do ipens you can do rons you can even do rens if you're in the few states that allow for remote ink notarization so the platform you know creates an environment where you could regardless of state execute based on your state's provisions Perfect. Someone wants to know, uh, specifically in New York, if you're seeing a lot more iPen, but I think, uh, like you said, iPen is not new in New York. It's not new in a lot of states. It's been around forever. Yes. We, there were certain banks who were doing, um, you know, 20 years ago, who were operating under the iPen. I'm yep. going to say, and I think that um, Bill and Roger maybe can say this as well, I think sometimes iPen is an easier sell because it's still in person. You're still in front of that person. Um, and so some of the lenders, I think, are more giving of that situation. But I don't, I don't know that we're going to see more lenders doing iPen in the future. I think it's just another tool in their toolbox. And of course, you guys yes. can add to that if you think that. Yes, I it's an it's an interim step. The other area where I see it commonly used is when you call your signers to introduce yourself and confirm tomorrow's appointment. If, in your opinion, you don't think they're technologically savvy enough to conduct this, you may want to call your title company and say, you know, I've talked to Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and, you know, they were going to have their son come over and help him, but he canceled. You know, I'm a little worried about the ability to do this. You could switch immediately to an IPIN. Obviously, that's assuming they're in a geographic region. But uh, that's another use case we see. We see a lot of IPINs in the reverse mortgage market where you're doing nothing but seniors. Uh, we see IPIN done in markets that are non-mortgage, such as legal industries, where they still want the face-to-face -face interaction. 
So again, it's a tool in your toolbox. So when you go out to attorneys, to hospitals, to universities, to colleges, uh, to uh, medical facilities, you've got a full toolbox to offer these people, not just a one trick. And many things will, will pique their interest that is not wrong. And you have the capability of doing that. And you have, of course, the capability of leaving behind that brochure that has your name, your email address, and your name on it. Perfect. Thank you. And of course, you want to make sure in your state what qualifications you need exactly. for IPEN. So it may not be the same as getting a commission for rent. So here in New York, for example, our electronic commission covers both IPEN and RON. Some states have different requirements. So certainly want to make sure in your state whether it is, but I think I think 45 or 46 states allow for IPEN, even more than RON, I think, at this point. So yes. certainly it's it's a fairly popular um, you know, other tool. All right, that's it for questions. I will turn it back over to you. Okay, we're going to quickly do a uh, a RON transaction. And you'll see it's very much like the IPEN. I'm gonna log in as as the notary. And instead of selecting we sign, I'm going to select Ron. And I'm going to upload that very same document. So add that document to the pack. Select it. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to schedule the appointment tomorrow and for practice purposes i suggest you use personal knowledge i do recommend everyone go through a kba and idv on their own so they're familiar with the process and if you have the capability of recording that session for train self-training i would also encourage that now another thing that i want to mention is up here we have this notary queue Again, you can create as many queues as you want for notaries that are in your network. You can partner up with other notaries that are, say, Spanish-speaking. Uh, partner up with notaries in other states, those eight states, that allow for biometric-only ID validations. So there's a lot you can do here. And I'm going to click Next. I'm going to enter the signer's name. You also, of course, can add a witness to that. You can have the witness, if they're a credible witness, go through a KBA and IDV themselves. You can also add guests, such as a translator, an escrow officer, an attorney, a parent, a guardian. So everything that occurs in the wet world, and this is where we are really separate from the other platforms. Between Roger and I, we've done thousands and thousands of these transactions. So we know what happens out there. So what we've done with the software is we've created an environment that would allow you to attend to those anomalies that we have actually experienced in the wet world electronically. That's a huge differentiator. Okay, so uh, for purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to change my venue to New York. Whoop, because I want to show you something. New York, there we go. And then we're going to choose a county, uh, doesn't matter, Delaware and next so if you had other notaries in your network you can you can pre-prep your document on their behalf okay again i'm going to this is where i would enter the uh, uh journal information but for purposes of the demonstration i'm just going to go right to tagging that document and you'll see our tagging process begins left to right and there's a reason for this and i'll show it to you very briefly I'm going to add the invitee, I'm going to Jane, and I'm going to drag her signature down here. And I'm going to also then add the notary signature, as you saw me do before, the stamp and the signature. Okay, then we have the other fields. These are added last, and I'll tell you why. Okay, let's say we're going to add a text box. Let's say that the Jane must enter a cell phone number, okay? So you're going to assign this, assuming there's multiple signers. Let's say there's Jane and John. You're going to assign this text box specifically to Jane, okay? And you're going to make it mandatory, meaning Jane must complete the information in this box before they sign the document, just like in the wet world. You don't sign it and fill it out. You fill it out and sign it. 
and you're going to put a note in this. This is just a note. Cell phone number. So that reminds you, excuse my uh, type, typing skills. Phone number. Okay, so that reminds you and Jane that in this box, they must enter their cell phone number. Okay, that's mandatory. Read only is when you just want to add documents to the, uh, add a element onto the document. It's like writing it with pen. So let's do this. We're in New York, but it says we're in Dallas. So I'm going to grab this blur, and I'm going to cover up the state of Texas. Okay, now I'm going to add a text box, and it's going to be read-only because I'm just applying text onto the document, and I'm going to enter. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't save my text box. I've just got the blur, so I'm going to add the text yeah, box. It's up there, Bill. It's up on the left, upper oh, left. There it is. Yep. Just dragging. Yep. Perfect. Drag it over here. I do that all Roger. the time. I do it all the time. <laughs> and I'm going to add New York as read only. So I've changed the venue. I won't change the others, but you get the idea. Now, another really cool feature is the ability to have a file upload. Let's see, you have to pick up a stipulation. It's a homeowner's release, let's say. You could label that HOA release. Now, this, and you can make it mandatory for the home, the, uh, the signer. This will remind them at this point in the transaction, they're supposed to upload a homeowner's release document. So it's an additional reminder for you of stipulations that need to be picked up during the transaction. Okay, I'm just going to remove that to make the document a little bit cleaner. Okay, and the other fields are checkboxes, radio buttons for multiple elections. Let's say a signer wants their check uh, delivered, deposited directly to their account. Option two is mailed to this address. Option three is I will come by and pick it up. Uh, so you create a radio button on each of those three elections, and the signer can pick that one which reflects their choice. So essentially anything that you do in the wet world we're accommodating allow you to do here. Okay, we're assuming the document's prepped. I'm going to click Next. And again, this is where I can select the Spanish language option, which would then create the default invite to be completely in Spanish, and all elections that pop up on the screen would be Spanish. So this lets me know that on 9.13, we have a signing at 9.47 a.m., and this due date up here means this invitation and this document will set on the platform until the 19th at 9 53. so if you had to reschedule you don't have to re-upload anything uh if it was rescheduled to the 20th you would have to reschedule it and it's a very simple process okay now i'm going to send this whoop i'm going to send this uh, out to be signed okay there's the notary if i had a different notary in my network i'll just click there and could sign it to them at this point and I'm just going to send this off to be uh, to be transmitted via our secure server to the signer and also to the notary. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. Uh, any other questions, uh, Marcy, that you see? Yeah, this is actually a really good one. If a notary is commissioned in multiple states, do they need multiple accounts? Do they need yes, account they for do. Each state? Yeah, right. Just like you can't commingle a journal, you can't commingle an account. So now the good thing about that is if you signed up, let's say you signed up for the 1495 plan where we're storing your journal, but you've, you're a dual commission, Maryland and Washington or Maryland and Virginia. Uh, the second account you open with recording storage is only 995. So every team member you add to that, their subscription, which would include the recording storage is only $9.95. So it's $14.95, including the recording storage for the first team member. All subsequent team members, which includes storage, is only $9.95. Does that make sense? Yeah, so $14.95 for their commission for New York and $9.95 for their commission for New Jersey. But that would include the video storage as well, correct? Correct, correct. Great, right. that's the only question I have at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to go to my invitations. I'm a 
prudent notary and I'm going to go in and I'm going to sign in a few minutes early to the session. So I'm going to click on fill and sign, meaning elements must be filled in on the document and not just signed. It's a uh, heads up to notary. And I don't know if you see the toolbar that's hiding this pop up on my side, but that says that I am a New York notary and I'm physically located in the state of New York during this transaction. And I must acknowledge that that becomes part of my journal and becomes a part of the uh, audit log. And I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm going to go to my meeting room and this lets me know I'm there, but Jane is not. So let's go to my email and open up Jane's invitation. Okay, here's Jane, just like you saw in the IPIN. Jane just clicks here and enters her passcode. Okay, at this point, Jane is waiting there for the signer to allow her to execute. At this point, she could scroll the document, look at the document, but she can't sign initial or execute any of the data fields. Now you see, and everyone sees my screen again, I've been bouncing back and forth. Marcy? Yes, uh-huh, I see it. Okay, now we see Jane's in the session, cool. You do not wanna start the session until they're there. Because by clicking Start Meeting, it pings AWS, Amazon Web Services, to open up a channel to their server to record this session. So you're charged, we're charged for that, you're charged for that. Now, if you have multiple signers and you found that one of the signers can't make the meeting, you have the ability to execute Jane and then reschedule later that day for Joe. So again, this goes to our experience in the field of what occurs out there and how do we accommodate that. So we're going to start this meeting. Okay, I think, yeah, I've got my camera. I'm going to have to go into the to the uh, Zoom app, Marcy, and undo my... Uh, Your video? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's grabbing the camera. Okay. Or the delay here, guys. Okay, so if I go up to, I'm going to stop the video. Give Bill a minute. Roger, can I ask a question while Bill's working on that, if possible? Sure, of course. Um, I know we talked about, um, you know, the notary has to check that they're physically in New York or whatever state they might be in. Does secured signing actually block a VPN or is this sort of like notaries knowing that they have to do the right thing and be in the state that they're supposed to be? Yeah, that's why they're acknowledging to that statement that the notary is doing the right thing for that that particular state. So um, it doesn't block. We don't have that ability to block. I don't know of anybody who does, um, but they're acknowledging that they're actually doing the right thing. Perfect, thank you. Bill, you're on mute. I can see you talking. But I, I don't know if you're still in the Zoom meeting or not. Can you hear me now? Yes, good. Okay, adding to Roger's comment, we, many, many, many firms operate off of VPN. Uh, law firms, uh, their offices are in, head offices and their servers are in Ohio but they've got a branch office in New York and they're required to do that because of security reasons. So VPNs aren't a bad thing. They're actually a very good thing with regards to security. So how do we adjust that? Let's say you're a notary in New York working for a firm that uses a VPN. We actually grab the IP address off your browser. So I'm operating off a of VPN right now. And you'll see in a moment when I show the audit trail that it shows me as being in California, even though I said I was in New York. So that's one of the reasons we were the first transaction platform to be, uh, be allowed to be used in the state of New York based on both the VPN issue as well as the, the uh, issue regarding enhanced ID NIST standards. Does that answer that, Marcy, or hopefully that? It does, yep. So I want to make sure it, for the New York people, it's important to note that 
New York state law says that there can be no um, blocking of location, right? And that's on the notary Correct. end, not on the signer's end. So again, it's one of those self-certified sort of situations. There's requiring that you're being honest about it, right? And I assume that in the journal, um, it probably shows an IP address in there. Yes. or so you, the I mean, geolocation. Someone to, so someone were to look and see, they would know that you're not there. So it's on you to make sure that you're not using a VPN that's blocking where you are, or any other kind of location blocking, I should say, not just VPN. Um, it doesn't matter where your signer is going forward. So I hope that that clarifies a little bit of that. Yes, and you can determine that when you do a practice test and you look at your audit log, the completion report, and I'll show you that in a moment. And for everyone who's asking, we are recording this. We will send out the recording along with a packet of information um, that Bill and Roger have, and it'll have information on there, of course, how to sign up. We'll put it both on our site, and we'll send it out um, in the newsletter the same way that you got this invite as well. So if you have to walk away or you're missing it or you need a little more information, it's okay because we'll get that information out to you. Okay, so I've I've got the uh, another session in uh, thirteen minutes, so let me uh, finish this up. So the notary is going to allow the signer to sign the document. Um, here after the signer joins the session, so the signer joins the session. Okay. The notary uh, allows the signer to assign, now to sign. Let me switch back to the notary side. They click OK. I agree to sign the document electronically. They share their screen. Select Share. And click Sign the Document. But you see the first half must enter a Cell phone number. Now they can sign their document. Okay, let's go back to the notary side. Now, if you have forgotten, mute this. If you have forgotten to enter an element, a signature, an initial, a checkbox, you can do that live during the middle of signing. And that's critical. You have a set of loan docs, 165 pages. There's probably 212 cells that you must propagate onto the document. You think you might miss one? I do. So this allows you to add your notary signature, the signature or initial for any and all signers. Uh, any element you added during the preparatory process, you can add live during the signing. That's a great saving feature. And really, any platform you use has got to have this. Okay, now I'm going to sign the documents as the notary. I'm going to click Sign. Okay, I'm going to opt in. I'm going to get to the platform. It's going to scroll to my first execution event. Be again, be that data date. I'm going to apply my stamp. And in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a pop up that says everything is complete and finished. That lets you know that all elements that were assigned to that document to be executed are done. And essentially, we're done with the with the process. Now, part of the branding package is when you end this signing. Yes, I really want to end it the platform will immediately go to your website instead of ours. This defaults back to our platform. So what would occur is on the signer side, I was a little slow on the draw there, but on the signer side, instead of going back to our website, it goes back to yours. That's another part of the branding package. You can upsell, ask for reviews, referrals, uh, display other sorts of elements that you provide in your service. It's a great branding tool. Okay, now let's go back to uh, the the uh, <clears throat> process here. To sign up for a paid up account, just go to our website, www.securedsigning.com, and you're going to uh, uh, open an account. Now, if you do that today, or following one of Roger's Wednesday webinars, we'll add $25 to your account for practicing. Uh, you have access to the Learn to Earn webinar, which goes over those verticals that exceed the mortgage vertical, particularly now in, in access and earning ability. You also have access to our advanced training classes on Thursdays and access to our RON user guide, which on the last page 
has a listing of how do I's uh, their little graphic representations of how do I reschedule a signing? How do I add a user in the middle of a session? How do I sign POA and as a signer in the same event? Uh, how do I add a doc, a signature in the middle of a signing? So they're great guides uh, to the process. Again, <clears throat> to, to register, you just go to our securedsigning.com, pricing, notary, and sign up. It's really quite simple. And again, it's only $9.95 a month. So it's a great way to get your toe in the water, see if this is something that you want to engage in. We provide you all the tools to brand, to market, to build, grow, and protect your business. We don't have our own signing service, so we don't compete against our clients. So to attend a, a Wednesday webinar or Thursday, if you're an existing user, uh, just send a request to info at securedsigning.com, and we will send you a link to either the Wednesday demonstration or the Thursday webinar for the class. And again, that Thursday class is conducted. It's not limited to an hour. It's limited to when everybody's questions are answered. So it's a great, I mean, the participation and the response to that has been phenomenal uh, because you don't know what you don't know. And as notaries, being the people that we are, would like to share our abilities, our challenges, our problems with other notaries. So that that group allows you to earn a, learn a lot of things that you would not think to ask. Okay, that's uh, any questions, Marcy? I don't have any 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 last questions. We certainly appreciate the information. If they do have questions that they think of after the fact, should they email this info at secure signing to get further information? Uh, yes, you can do that. Uh, also, we have if you want to go direct to us, you there's our if you this will be part of the recording. You can either send an email to Roger or I or call us. And we're happy to entertain any questions uh, that you might have. Yes, I can vouch for that. Um, Bill and I have gone back and forth a lot <laughs> by email <laughs> when I have questions or we want to talk about something. So they're very responsive. I certainly appreciate that. I certainly appreciate your time today. Um, I know that you've got another one to run out to, but this was valuable information. Again, I will be sending this out to everyone along with the package of information that Bill and Roger are sending off to me. If you have any questions, you can certainly forward them right on to Roger or Bill. Or you can forward them to me, and I'll forward them on as well. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much. Uh, Marcy, Roger, did you have anything you wanted to add? Roger, is he, he kind of keeps watch on me to make sure I've covered <laughs> everything well. No, Bill, you did a phenomenal job. Thanks, everyone, for your time. And reach out to us if you have any questions. We're happy to assist. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye.